bless you. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We do serve a, a great God yeah. who is definitely worthy of our praise. Yeah. Amen. 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 I uh, appreciate the prayers of the righteous. The scripture says they abound much. Yeah. There's some heavy hearts. We have family members that's grieving, family members coming out of surgery, family members going into surgery, family members trying to be caregivers. And uh, there's so much going on right now. Everybody has their own narrative, their own story, their own set of circumstances. But I want you to know you're not the only one that's going through. Yeah. You know, the preachers always talk about either you going in a valley or you coming out of a valley or you in a valley. Yeah. But there's always a valley lurking by. Yeah. Yeah. But I read somewhere, yea, though I walk through the valley. I will fear him. It's my God. His rod, his name. They, with me. they guide me. Amen. And so we don't go through the valley alone. Amen. We have the God of all comfort Thank you, Lord. that goes with us. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, you can feel a spirit of weariness. Folks just tired. But yet, they got up. And they came out. In spite of the drizzle, they wanted to hear a word from you. Hide me, O oh Lord, behind your cross, that they can hear a word from you. Speak, O oh Lord, for your servant is listening. Be glorified in all that's said and done today. Move in ways that only you can. Lord, you know what each person is dealing with. Each unique set of circumstance you are aware of, and I'm asking you to speak into it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 As we pick back up and I walk through the book of Matthew, we're in chapter 9 this morning. Specifically, we'll be looking at verses 18 to 26, Matthew 9 verses 18 to 26, and I like to, to read them in their entirety, and then we'll walk through it. Verse 18, Matthew begins saying, as he was telling them these things, and he referring to as Jesus, suddenly one of the leaders came and knelt down before him saying, my daughter just died. But come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. So Jesus and his disciples got up and followed him. Just then a woman who had been suffered from bleeding for 12 years approached from behind and touched the end of his robe. For she said to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I'll be made well. Jesus turned and saw her have courage, daughter. Your faith has saved you. And a woman was made well from that moment. When Jesus came to the leader's house, he saw the flute players in a crowd lamenting loudly. Leave, he said, because the girl is not dead but asleep. And he laughed at him. But after the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand. And the girl got up. Then news of this spread throughout that whole area. As we open up this passage today, I want you to know that God is a God of circumstances. He's a God of circumstances. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all tell this story. 
And Matthew, unlike Mark and Luke, Matthew jumps right to the point. Matthew does not give us as many details as, as Mark and Luke about the individuals that's, that Jesus is helping in this passage because he wants us to fix our eyes right on Jesus. Just look at him. If you read the other accounts, and I always say read all the stories together to give you the whole picture. Uh, Luke tells uh, uh, the story, and he tells us that the ruler's name is Jairus. That, that meant something to him. Matthew left it out. He tells us that his daughter was 12. Luke also tells us that the woman who had the issue of blood had spent all the money she had on doctors uh, for 12 years, and they couldn't do anything to help her. But Matthew, Matthew is just building a case for us. He wants us to know that Jesus is the Messiah. He wants us to know that, that Jesus is fulfilling the Old Testament. He wants us to know that, that this is the sovereign God. And his whole point is to continue to present this evidence. And in and, and this passage we're looking at today, Matthew wants us to know that we serve this God of circumstances, meaning he can handle any circumstance we throw at him. Amen? Matthew says, wow, Jesus was telling them uh, these things, right? And, and so he says, while Jesus was teaching, and we remember how this was talking about, Jesus was teaching John's disciples when they came up to him and they started asking him about why do we fast all the time and, and y'all don't fast all the time. And while Jesus is talking to them, while he's explaining to them, while he's giving them an apologetic for the difference between Judaism and Christianity, Another circumstance come right up on him. They, they run right up on him and, and, and they want to know, hey, my daughter is dying. Right? And so he's dealing with this man that's dealing with this death. And in this passage specifically, we deal with these three things, these three circumstances. We deal with this death. We deal with despair. We deal with a uh, uh, doubt. You know, have you ever felt any of them? Yeah. Some of that this morning, right? You know, I was like, it's amazing where, where the Lord brings us when he brings us. You know? And, and Jesus is approached by, by Jairus, the synagogue ruler. And the synagogue ruler comes to him and he's desperately telling him that his daughter uh, is dead. Now, now, Mark and Luke, when they tell the story, they say she was dying. They communicate that she was dead by the time Jesus got to the house. But they communicate that she was dying. And, and, and sometimes when we don't look at scripture and we don't look at how folks are writing and what's the point of their writing, we see these things and be like, is that a conflict? Is that a contradiction? Right? But I, I want you to know that if you know Matthew, Matthew's not in for the small talk. Matthew skips right to she was dead. Now understand, here's the story I'm telling you. I can't be, tell you everything, but she was dead. So the whole, and, and he's not trying to be insensitive. He's not trying to contradict the other accounts, but he's trying, and he's anxiously trying to point out Jesus' power over death. Now, as a tragic of a situation that Jesus is faced with, he's called the moment that he's headed towards this young girl that's, that's dying. He's approached by somebody else, right? And he's interrupted by, by this second circumstance with a woman in despair because of her issue of blood. Have, have you ever been on your way to a mercy and another mercy happened? Yeah. Have you ever said, God, I just got one phone call about this and then that happened? Yeah. You know, you got things just constantly happening all at the same time. It's not just you. I want you to know Jesus is walking through it. It was my week. I got a call. I'm on the way to the funeral. I get a call. I'm on the way to the funeral. I need you to come to the hospital. We got something else going on. I got to get to the hospital. It's all of these things. That's happening. I want you to know that Jesus is aware that we do not have an unsympathetic high priest, but he walked this journey out. He knows what it's like to go from one emergency to another emergency, from one circumstance to another circumstance, right? And so he's approached by this woman. This woman has this, this, this incurable blood disease, and she had uh, uh, come to this conclusion that because the doctors can't help me, if I could just touch, yeah, yeah. right? If my healing is wrapped up 
in his presence. So if I could just touch the tassel on the hem of his robe, I can be healed. You're talking about faith now, right? Is it possible to please God without faith? Let, let's be clear, right? So when we go to him and we ask of him, we got to believe that he hears and he can. Amen? He's able. Her condition, per the Levitical law, made her unclean. We know about unclean folks. This ain't the first time we heard about unclean folks, right? It excludes her from normal relationships. See, it's one thing to be caught up in our stuff and exclude ourselves, right? Because some of us do that. We get caught up in our feelings. We get caught up in our medical issues. We get caught up in whatever's going on, and we just we just remove ourselves, right, from community. There's another thing to be ostracized. There's another thing to be put out when you're in a place where you're like nobody don't even want to hear about my stuff. Nobody want to talk about my stuff. Y'all better praise God. Somebody ask you how you doing. <laughs> praise God. Somebody want to pray for you. That they ask you, no, seriously, how you doing? Like, some of us just say, how you doing? And we really don't want to know. <laughs> right? Like, well, I didn't know it was going to be how you doing. But it's some of us that care. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so when we ask, how you doing? We serious. We want to pray for you. Amen. We want to hold you up. We want to stand beside you. We want to lift you up. I hope that if you're here, you done found somebody yeah. that's going to do that for you. And if somebody's not, let me know who they are. <laughs> no, there's, there's some places you can go where nobody don't care about you and your situation. You're just another person filling another seat. When you're going through something, like this woman right here, it brings a, a, a bit of isolation. She couldn't be a, a wife. She couldn't be a mother. She couldn't even be a friend. Because it forced her to keep her distance from anybody and everybody. And when you're going through stuff like that, right? When you're dealing with disease, when you're dealing with ailments, when you're dealing with grief, when you're dealing with these, these feelings of, of being alone, there's a spirit of despair, discouragement, depression begin to creep in. And no matter how many people say they're praying for you, no matter how many people text you with the emoji, right? There's still these moments of, of loneliness. There's still these moments of discouragement. There's still these moments where you just feel lonely in this deep heaviness. If we honestly begin to wonder if God is real. I'm not, I'm expecting nothing. I don't know. You ain't got to say nothing. But we begin to, to wonder if he's listening. We, get, we begin to wonder, is he ever going to actually answer our prayers? Is he going to even respond? Speak, O oh Lord. To make matters worse, she had been suffering with this illness for so long. As we see, she don't even have a name. She just became known as the woman with the issue of blood. No one wants to be known by their infirmity. Right? No, nobody wants you to, to, to refer to them as what they have. Oh, that, oh, that's the man with cancer. Right? That's the man with, with diabetes. That's the man with the speech impediment. That's the kid with the... Like, nobody wants to be described in that way. It might be what I have, but it's not who I am. And the reason is because people can treat you like your ailment. Right? They, they, they treat you like, like the thing that you have. And, and, and in her case, it was like, oh, don't, don't sit next to me. Who can walk into church and sit next to you and make you move over a seat? Hmm? comes to your mind? Hmm? Somebody struggling with their identity? Somebody who smelled like what they drank last night? 
Somebody smell like what they smoked this morning. Y'all, y'all, y'all. Where am I keeping my heart? In some places, if your breath just smell, they move over the sea. <laughs> That's just gingivitis. <laughs> <laughs> this woman was put in isolation. And, and, and because of that, it kept her pain and it kept her suffering at a distance away from everybody as well. So now you suffer alone. You you be in pain alone. You grieve alone. And she was at this broken place. Matthew introduces us to the but God moment. Huh? Yeah. Because in the midst of her pain, in the midst of her brokenness, in the midst of her despair, Jesus came by. Come on, Aren't you glad Jesus came by in the midst of your stuff? Yeah. Have you ever prayed so much and cried so hard that, that, that you were exhausted, not just from the circumstance, but from praying so much and crying so hard. I mean, you begged and you pleaded and you petitioned Jesus for answers. And, and I don't know if, if, if we're being honest, sometimes I hesitate to say your will. Uh, are you following me? So, sometimes I, 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 I don't know what Jesus' will might be. Sometimes my want, I want to be his will. Because when I think about his will, it can conflict with how I want it to end. So I don't say, Lord, let your will sometimes be, I'm going to be honest. I don't say let your will be done sometimes because it might conflict with the very thing that I'm pleading for. Oh. Habakkuk said, how long, oh Lord? How long must I call for help and you do not listen? David said, how long? Right? How long? Will, will you forgive me forever? He said, how long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with sorrow? He said, wrestle with these thoughts day after day in my heart. It's amazing what is included in the word of God. See, because the things that we be feeling, the things that we might not want to say out loud, Thank God that David and Habakkuk and the psalmist said them out loud. We're not alone in our pain and our pleading for God to answer our prayers. Sometimes we need to be reminded that our biblical heroes found themselves in places of despair as well because of their extenuating and exhausting circumstances. But God, we must be encouraged because the Bible tells us that blessed are those whose hope is in the God of Jacob. It says blessed whose hope is in the Lord their God. They say he is the maker of heaven and of earth and sea and of everything in it. And he remains faithful. Amen. He remains faithful forever. God reminds us in Jeremiah 29 and 13, he said, if you seek me, right, you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. Stop your half-baked prayers. Don't give me a one sentence and tell me this is all my heart. Don't spend more time on Facebook than you do on your knees. And I talk to God, I just don't know what to say. Well, man, that's amazing because you, you, you text <laughs> nonstop. Huh? Some of y'all violate text rules. There's a difference between the text and the email. Can, 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 can we take a station identification where 
Like, like, a text supposed to be short, brief communication, right to the point. I mean, it's bigger than, than it might even be bigger than a tweet. Like, yo, you can't send me an email in a text. All right? Let's be clear. But, but we, 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 we seem to have a lot to say about a lot of stuff to a lot of people. But when it comes to the God of circumstance, who can change everything that you're talking and you're praying about, Sometimes we get weak. How can you be going through it and have a weak prayer life in the process? See, this woman sought the Lord with everything she had. She didn't give up, right? When, when a doctor said that they've done all that they can do, she sought the great physician, right? She, she didn't stop with Jesus is busy with life and death issues. Sometimes we'd be like, oh, my, my, my stuff ain't big enough to put on the prayer list. Huh? I, I run into somebody and they'd be like, oh, Pastor, I got blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, I ain't see that no prayer list. You ain't putting on it. <laughs> what, what am I missing? What am I missing? This woman said, no, I'm going straight to the Lord. I'm not allowing the crowd that surround me or the crowd that surround him stop me from going into his presence. And Jesus said, in fact, uh, uh, it was her faith in him, right, that brought about her healing from him. And then he called her daughter. I don't know if you understand the significance of that. He called her daughter. The one people disowned he called daughter. The one they gave up on, he called daughter. The one who at point one point was only known as her disease was now known as the Messiah's daughter. This term of endearment, this term of ownership was amazing. And the thing about it, this is what we are known as as well. Right? No matter what we used to be, no matter what we used to do, when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we become sons and daughters of God. And Jesus said it intentionally because this term of endearment, he's saying, while the ruler Jairus is right there who's calling and asking about his daughter. And so Jesus calls him daughter so Jairus can say, I know what you're dealing with. I know what you're asking for. I know what the issue is. And so he calls them the God of circumstances because we're saying that in our despair, he can repair. Right? And, and, and in, our, in our hurt, he can heal. In our chaos, he can calm because he is the God of circumstances. All we need is that saving faith as she did in him. Amen? It says, when Jesus came to the leader's house in verse 23, he saw the flute players and a and crowd lamenting loudly. And he said, leave because the girl is not dead but asleep. Jesus finally makes his way to Jairus' house to heal his daughter who by this point had passed. No. The funeral is in process. That's what the flutes represent and the people lamenting loudly. The funeral was going on. And Jesus walks in, which would normally mean that, that, that it, was, it was too late, Jesus. You remember when he came to Lazarus, right? Mary, it was too late, right? But this is the first, first time this is happening, that Jesus walks in, and, and, and they're looking like, oh, what, what, what can you do now? It's over. She's gone. But this is what Matthew was leading us up to, this, this but God moment. Matthew was compiled and Matthew's been communicating the narrative of how Jesus is sovereign over all circumstances. He talked about the disease. He talked about the storms. He talked about demons. He talked about paralysis. He talked about sin. And now he's showing that Jesus has power over death. Jesus walks in and says, she's not sleep. She's not dead. She's asleep. Now, he, he wasn't denying that she was actually dead. He was only implying that it was only temporary. Right? Because when we say, where, oh, death 
is your victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Right? We acknowledge that Jesus defeated sin, that he conquered death, and by making it transitional for believers, right? Because death could not hold him down. Death cannot hold us down. Amen? Jairus just wanted his daughter healed. But the testimony he would now have about the power of God, it, it increased exponentially when Jesus raises her from the dead. This is what we mean when we say God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more. And above all we could ever ask or think. Everything Jesus does is for his Father's glory. Every situation we encounter uh, and, and, and seek the will of God for, right, it is being ran through that filter. Remember this, of, of Romans 8.28. Romans 8.28 is a filter, folks, right? And, and, and all things, right, God works for the good of those who love him. Right? And who have been called uh, according to his purpose. Right? In all things, God works for the good. Did you hear? Yeah. Scripture says, in all things. And, and, and the truth is, only when we acknowledge God is working for our good in all things. Right? In, in, in all circumstances, can we be like Paul and says, I have learned to be content in all things and in all circumstances. The truth is, sometimes I realize we can't hear good news until we come face to face with bad news. Can, can I stay here for a minute? I know we used to quicken messages. I need us to understand that sometimes God allows circumstances to take place in our lives to cause us to pivot back to him. Right? I, I, I need you to hear what I'm saying. Like, like, as, as much as I like to say when, when I hear somebody and talk to somebody and engage somebody about their testimony of how they came to know the Lord. I would wish they were like, oh, I was I was so blessed and the Lord did this for me. And I said, man, I just got to go find me a church and worship him and thank him. Oh, the Lord just is so good. I had to, I had to, I had, no. Nah. The majority of testimonies I hear always come with some level of tragedy, some level of sin, some, some, some issue that was so challenging and beyond their control that brought them through the, to the throne of grace, right? And, and, and so that's what I mean. Sometimes we, we got to get to a place that caused us to fall on our face for us to seek the throne of grace. And it's in these circumstances that God allows to happen, right? That we either turn to God and watch our faith increase. Watch us develop perseverance. Watch us develop fortitude. You can't become a mature Christian without going through some stuff. It don't just happen like that. There's some old babies up in the church. Age don't make you mature. Jesus saw a woman in despair. He saw a ruler dealing with death. And then he comes up in his house and he sees these doubters up in the house. When Jesus said she was asleep, the doubters in the house started to laugh. You see that? They started to laugh when he came in. It says, when he came in, the leaders of the house, he saw the flu and the crowd emitting loudly. He said, leave because the girl is not dead but asleep. And they laughed at Jesus. They laughed because they didn't believe him. They didn't believe in him. They didn't believe what he was communicating. They didn't believe about the child death being 
temporary, much like when you share your faith. With unbelievers, they laugh at you sometimes. When you tell them that Jesus got power over sin and over death and in him we have life everlasting, they giggle. Do you believe that for real, for real? But I'm going to tell you, it's passages like this, like this one right here, that makes me love the Bible so much. The fact that Matthew keeps it real, right? The, the fact that everybody who meet Jesus wasn't in awe. Everybody who met Jesus didn't be like, oh, hell, Jesus, no. The fact that he met some folks that laughed at him, and they recorded it. And gave it to us. Like, that is how real your Bible is. Yeah. They tell you, Jesus walked in and folks are laughing at him. Yeah. Jesus needed to put him out the house before he could even revive this young girl from the dead. Sometimes people need to be put out. It's in the word. Sometimes people need to be put out the house. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> but we need to understand there will always be a contrast on how people respond to Jesus in the gospel. Some will take a step of faith and some will die in doubt. The pastor tells us when Jesus brought this young girl back to life, the news spread throughout the whole area. Not the news about the doubt, not the news about the laughter, but the news about how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. They talked about the miracle. See, it's one thing to say without faith is it possible to please God. It's one thing to say we walk by faith and, and not by sight. But we got to remember that from the beginning in the garden in Genesis, Three, the enemy has been trying to get us to doubt our faith and question our God. Yeah. All right? Enemies, unbelievers will always try to get you to wrestle with, is this true? Like Jesus, we have to show them a life that has been touched by him revived in him to make them wrestle with the question, what if it is true? Yeah. Wow. Right? See, we don't do that. We, we, we fear people asking us, what if it's true? You know? But we need to, but the, the, this idea that you need to ask yourself. See, because what I'm saying is true, and you don't accept, woo. Yeah. Mm. Right? You don't have to fear the questions. Jesus didn't Fear the questions. He allowed the Pharisees. He allowed John disciples. He can handle our questions from us and from them. Amen? Because he's the God of all circumstances. He can handle the doubt. He can handle the despair. He can even handle the death. You know, I read somewhere said there's nothing too hard for God. And although we will have trouble in this world, we don't lose heart because God is over the world and every circumstance in it. Are you hearing me? He's the God of circumstance. Father God, may Lord, your peace give us peace at all times and in every circumstance. Lord, please be with us Hear our prayers. There's some of us dealing with death. There's some of us dealing with doubt. There's some of us came in facing despair. But thanks be to God that we can have peace that surpasses all understanding because we got a God with all understanding.
Amen. Praise God for that word this morning. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for that word. Amen. Amen and amen. Um, we're not going to assume that, that everybody that heard that word knows this Jesus that Pastor Anderson was talking about this morning. So we want to invite you um, to believe in him. We want to invite you into the family of Jesus Christ. And so in the sanctuary with every head bowed and with every eye closed, I want to ask the saints to pray this morning. As we extend the invitation for you to come and, and know that Jesus that Pastor Anderson preached about this morning, the Jesus who will step into your circumstance, no matter what your circumstance is, no matter how hopeless it might seem, Jesus can step into your circumstance. All you have to do is believe. All you have to do is accept him. All you have to do is obey him. All you have to do is, is know him. Um, we are inviting you to come to know this Jesus. Jesus that could heal um, the sick. Jesus that could bring back the dead. Jesus that sits at the right hand of the Father. We invite you to know this Jesus this morning, to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior today. We don't know what your circumstance is, but he does. We don't know what you're going through, but he does. We don't know what, what you're dealing with, but he does. And he's just waiting for you to just say yes. Just say yes to his will, yes to his way. Just say, yes, I believe in Jesus Christ. That's all he's waiting for. So he can call you son or call you daughter as pastor preached this morning. We invite you to come to know Jesus this morning. If you want to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, and you are in the sanctuary this morning, we would just ask that you just slip up your hand. Slip up your hand and say, yes, I want to know Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. Yes, I believe that that he died and that he was raised on the third day and that he sits at the right hand of God right now. We just ask that you would just raise your hand if you want to come to know Jesus this morning in the sanctuary, if you want to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. If you're online, if you're online and, and, and you have heard this word this morning and, and you feel Jesus calling to you this morning, um, and you want to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior this morning, I just ask that you would pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord, I am a sinner and deserve punishment for my sin. I believe that Jesus paid the penalty for my sin, and I ask God's forgiveness. I will follow Jesus, and I confess him as my Lord and Savior. I receive the free gift of salvation in Jesus Christ today. Amen. If you prayed that prayer this morning, I want to welcome you to the family of Jesus Christ. If you prayed this prayer this morning, um, I want to welcome you to the family of Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you're online and you prayed this prayer, you can text us this morning at 267-991-89. Zero seven. That's two six seven nine nine one eight nine zero seven. If you're going through a circumstance this morning and and you want prayer, and again every eye, every every head bowed, every every eye closed in the sanctuary. If you want prayer this morning, you're going through a circumstance and you know you need Jesus to step into your circumstance this morning. Just slip up your hand. Slip up your hand. I'm gonna slip up mine. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray, Lord, that you would bless those, Lord, who raised their hands this morning and even those who didn't, Father, because we are all going through a circumstance. Lord, we pray that you would step into our circumstance, Lord, as, as Pastor Anderson preached about this morning, Lord, that you would heal our sickness, Lord, that you would uh, bring us back, Lord, in, in those dead places where, where we are in, Father. We pray, Lord, that you would just bless um, and, and speak to us. Lord, in ways that just other people just can't. We pray, Lord, that you would step in, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, to just hold on to you in our circumstance, to know that the circumstance, Lord, is, is not bigger than you, 
to know that you are bigger than anything that we are going through, to know, Lord, that you can step in and fix it, Father, to believe, Lord, that you are there and that you love us and that you want us to just come to you and believe, Lord, that you can do it. Lord, we pray right now that you would do it, Lord, that, that you would fix our circumstance this morning, Father. We pray for every single person, Lord, who is going through something this morning, Lord, that, that you would step in and speak to them, Lord, and that you would listen to them, Lord, that you would hear their groans, Father, and, and just, just fix it. Lord, we pray, Lord, that right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that those things that look unfixable, Father, that you would just fix it. We pray all of these things, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.